All right, we're back for part six of Elden Ring, the ultimate guide. Now, if this is your first time watching any of these guides, we recommend that you watch the video linked in the description. Now, just quickly, we're grabbing some arrows from Kali at the Church of Ellie because we're going to be using arrows and our bow extensively in this area. So we recommend you go get one because a lot of our strategies involve using one. Now, the first thing we're going to be doing is speaking to the NPC Gostock, but just quickly before that, we're going to grab this Grace and then there's a couple of items that we're going to grab before that as well now also if you have any tips then put them in the stickied comment the tips comment i guess you can reply to that with any tips you've got and then people can have a look through that to see any extra tips that you've added but without further ado i guess we can get into it so that's a fire grease we picked up and uh, we also picked up a furled finger which is a multiplayer item and when you use that it will open up the multiplayer aspect of the game that will show uh, other people's summon signs but also you can be invaded after using that item as well but this guy doesn't really touch the multiplayer stuff but yeah here's Gostock so gatekeeper Gostock is the first of a couple of NPCs that you go into encounter in Stormvale um, like this interaction here shows you um, if you tell him you're going to use the main path go touch the main door he will shout for a guard above to open it we're not going to take this path, because if you do, you'll be pelted with balusters the whole time. Now, Gostock does have a quest and a pretty unique interaction, but we don't do it because it's pretty ineffectual. Well, we complete his quest, but we don't do the unique interaction. So, as you're progressing through this part of Stormville, um, if you die at any point on this path, Gostock will take half of the runes that would have been left in your bloodstain. Um, you can stop this from happening by bumping into him, so you progress a little bit, you backtrack, you find him wherever he's hidden, he'll give you a grace mimic and then stop stealing your runes. Well, after no. that point, sorry, um, after Just... that point, the next time you'll interact with him will be in uh, Godric's boss room after you've completed the area. Yes. Now, here is us using the bow to take care of these eagle enemies, I guess they're called warhawks specifically. Um, now if you don't take take them out using the bow and we're also using the fire arrows that we told you not to use because this is why, because it means it's just one mighty shot fire arrow will kill one of those one of the warhawks fighting them normally is an unbelievable pain in the ass so it's better to just take care of them at a distance and then you can just kind of very easily progress through this part of the game um so yeah, this is one of the reasons why we said to get a bow. Um, so there's a couple There's a couple more. There was those three, and then I think there's four here. There's this one, and then either two or three in the in the, uh, the tree, I suppose. So the Warhawks have a couple of drops. Um, they can drop flight pinions, they can drop Stormhawk feathers, both of which are crafting items, and they can also drop the Warhawks Talon, which is a straight sword, class weapon, and it has a unique R2. It's it's generally pretty great. Um, so if you were looking for something fun and interesting to use, you could use that. If you're struggling to obtain one by farming them, you could pop a Silver Pickled Foul Foot, which improves your drop chances and gives you a better chance of obtaining that, that item specifically. So here we are using the bow again to uh, bait these exiled soldiers down, uh, down this kind of planked path, I suppose. Uh, because... If you start running up this, up the stairs, that guy there specifically will like toot his horn and then like two more guys will start rushing you on this path. So it's better to just bait that guy down because otherwise like getting rushed off three of these guys on like a tiny little platform just isn't a particularly great time. So, uh, I mean, obviously you can do it, but like it's, it's just fuck it. We're going to take the easy way out. Now, these guys are commoners. Uh, kind of like they look like Gostock. Now these guys can drop the commoner set, which is the headband, the garb, the shoes. They also drop the weathered straight sword, and they are the only enemies in the game that do so. That's so that's how you would farm for the weathered straight sword specifically. Um, now we're just showing you here that again stealth is a thing in the game. Here is like something that you can do, and that there are situations that it's applicable. Obviously, you could just use ass slam and kill them that way. That is what it is. So we picked up some claws there. Um, I can't say I've ever used them, so I can't comment on their quality, but um, I guess they never came up. They're probably fun. Now, here is uh, an example of us using the crafting in the game. Now, firebombs, 
this is super unnecessary. You could also use a fire arrow to do the exact same thing. But if you have the stuff to make the fire bombs, then what you can do is use one, hit the explosive barrels, and then that way you won't get caught out in the trap. Because if you head up to the explosive barrels, a bunch of commoners are going to throw their own fire bombs and blow up as soon as you get there. As you can see. So this is just like showing you that there's a trap there. You could easily just barrel up there and maybe just roll through the barrels before they can do it. But, you know, better safe than sorry, innit? Now, when it comes to the Exile Soldiers, they can drop the Exile set. So that's the Hood, the Armour, the Gauntlets, and the Greaves. They can also drop the weapon that they're wielding, other than the sword. They don't drop the sword for some reason, so there is no Exile Sword. But there is a Spear. They can drop the Torch Pole, which is what that guy had. They can drop the Crescent Moon Axe. Uh, and they can drop the Soldier's Crossbow, as well as Lord Swarm Bolts, Normal Bolts, Smith and Stones, Stormhawk Feathers, Smoldering Butterflies, and Mushrooms. And also, as much as they can be shown to be wielding the marred leather shield or the marred wooden shield, they don't drop that. Ah, oh, right, nice to get that out of the way. <laughs> Those items, specifically the marred leather and marred wooden shields, you'll find um, in specific locations within Stormvale, so you can obtain them, just not from the Exile Soldiers. And they're just also not better than the shield that we currently have. Or any of the ones that we use throughout. <laughs> yeah. It's because this shield that we have is just basically better than everything. Yeah, you can um, get them. I don't know why you would, but you can. I, cosplay reasons, I suppose. So there's another commoner with a firebomb. Just kill him. Now, in here is another... We're going to get... It's like a, a trap. So um, we step inside the door and it's going to get locked behind us. So we're going to use the Physic Flask to put the bubble shield on and use Golden Vow to boost our defences. And um, what's going to happen is we're now locked in this room with this Banished Knight. Now, theoretically, this guy could actually uh, prove maybe like a little bit of an issue at this point in the game. If you came here a bit earlier, perhaps. Uh, so it is kind of a trap for particularly new players anyway. Uh, we get the Rusty Key here and we also get the um, the Curved Sword Talisman in this, in this box. Now, uh, what's the Curved yeah. Sword Talisman doing? So the Curved Sword Talisman boosts the strength of the guard counter move that you can do. So you block an attack, you press the heavy attack button, and uh, you respond with a little spin move and an attack that does a bunch of stance damage. Now, we used this in an earlier part to fight imps, and if you were having a hard time with a particularly tough set of imps, I know that does pop up once or twice where some imps are just stronger than the rest of the dungeon they're in. Um, it can give you an easier time fighting them it's not necessary to do but it is an option you now have so which is nice this little gap here uh so there is a gap there just to make a point so that way um because the amount of times i fell through that gap because it's in a shadowed bit so it doesn't it just looks like there's more planks there so yeah just jump that and then just jump over here and then this leads to us getting the brick hammer just fighting our way not through some more exile soldiers Brick weapon, uh, brick hammer, sorry, not a bad weapon. Um, it's a great hammer, it does a lot of stance damage with its heavy attacks, but it's also really short. So, you know, kind of a dealer's choice. I wouldn't use it, personally, but it, again, is an option you now have. And if you follow the guide, you'll have every option, because we get everything. This is correct. Now, uh, when it comes to the Banish Knights, which is the guy we got locked in the room with, they can drop the Banished Knight set, so that's the Helm, the Armour, the Gauntlets, and the Greaves. Now, they can also sometimes drop an altered version of the Helmet and the Armour. They can also drop the Halberd, they can drop the Greatsword, and the Shield. Now, watch out for that guy there. He does make a lunge for a grab attack at you, so maybe take, like, just make sure to take a, a wide angle around that corner. Uh, that way you're not going to get grabbed by that fucking guy. But, um... Heading around this kind of bottom ledge here, there's some mushrooms, which is like a crafting item, for, uh, mostly for like. I mean, I know that I know that fire bombs use mushrooms. Most so, of I the mean, normal pots use mushrooms, actually. Um, and just yeah. to make a point about the altered the Banish Knight drops, so the altered helmet, the altered chest piece, they will be dropped by the knights wearing it. So this guy's yeah. wearing the normal Banish Knight helmet and the. I think the normal Benish Knight armor. Um, the altered one is dropped by the knights wearing it. So if you're after the altered helm, you need the ones with the hood. If you're after the altered armor, you need the ones with the little tabard. 
And we're coming up to the most important item in the area. Another <sighs> Lovely fucking artery. artery leaf. I mean, honestly, we could make a salad out of those fucking things by the end of the game, and it's like, we just never use them. It'd be like uncooked kale. It'd just be crunchy and horrible. No. Yeah. Dry and rubbery at the same time. Just uh... Bland and spicy. The arterial leaf <laughs> is all things to no one. <laughs> so, here we are. Um, so, you can jump across here for like a couple of items, but we're now coming up to the... Oh, shit. What's it called? The Grace? Um... Rampart Tower. Yeah, and this is essentially like the the main hub part of this level most of the shortcuts and stuff loop around back here and there's kind of like a bottom middle and top level to stormvale castle so we're going to start with the top which is essentially the rooftops and then that leads back down eventually to the um, the main gate it's so cool how the different levels and different loops in Stormville all intersect with each other. This is, like, by far one of the best design dungeons that FromSoft have ever churned out. It's just so good. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this area is, like... I mean, it's massive, but... It's it's kind of, like, what you want. It's... I mean, it reminds me very much of, like, Boletaria Castle from Demon Souls, and it's kind of, like... You know, that vision fully realised, I feel... Yeah, no, I agree, 100%. Now, here's a, a good example of where the stealth actually does come in handy, because this guy we're about to sneak up on and backstab has a, a little horn, and if he blows it, all the other exile soldiers in the area will be alerted, they'll start attacking you. Um, so if you take him out early, you don't really have to worry about them, you can just deal with the ones that are directly in your way and then ignore the rest. Aye, because, uh, fuck getting the... surrounded by these guys. Um, so, <laughs> you can reach the rooftops by coming up these little sta sandbags here. That lets you kind of get onto the ledge. And so this is like a very unique sort of thing to Elden Ring, is kind of jumping along rooftops and stuff like that. You don't, you don't really, like, interact with an environment like this in the other Souls games, aside from Sekiro, I suppose. So you can jump into this, uh, this tower here, jump down, get a stone sword key, and now there's another Stormhawk. Warhawk? Warhawk. Warhawk, yeah. And um, we're going to try and get a jump attack on it just so we can get a little bit extra damage. These guys are kind of oddly tanky. Uh, however, if it did kind of fly away, you could in indeed use Bloody Slash um, as, a, as a way of dealing with them. Now, we also got this set cross-legged gesture on the, on the end of the rooftop there. And now we're going to head around this ledge to get a uh, smith and stone too. I cannot believe I, I couldn't figure out how to get this item. I tried for hours to figure out how, how the fuck you path to this. And yeah, it took in the me end, a while to find it as well. Me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd seen it from above and I was like, where is that? And I searched <laughs> this roof for, it, it must have been like two and a half hours. And I just couldn't find it. Yeah, it's just it's just not especially obvious. Um, it, like, and I love it just that. Doesn't... I love the the amount of hidden things in this area. Just little sneaky. Oh, if you jump on this one little corner of roof, you get a free smithing stone too. Awesome. Do more of that, please. Definitely, definitely. I just love how a lot of the things aren't like immediately obvious in Stormville. Uh, kind of like this bit as well. It kind of just feels like you're not meant to be here, but like it sort of, like it is a part of the level. So we're just kind of working our way through these exiles. Um, use the katana, use Aslam. It's all good options. Yeah, whatever floats your boat. Dealer's choice. Aye, aye. You shouldn't really have too much of an issue with these guys. And like, even though I said that you know it's bad to get ganged up by three of them at the start of the level, it's mostly because of the thin platform that you're on is why it's a problem. Now, up this ladder is the Claw Talisman. And uh, what does the Claw Talisman do? Claw Talisman is a fantastic option. So, as I said in the previous part, each of the weapon classes has a talisman associated with it, and the Claw Talisman boosts the strength of jump attacks, and it's something that we end up taking massive advantage of later in the game when we switch off from the Katanas to the Great Stars, and you'll see the difference that the Claw Talisman can make. So now what we're trying to do is descend down to the bottom part 
of Stormvale. Um, and we can do it by just making this series of drop downs here. And essentially we're just doing this in order to just very quickly get the shortcut down here. Um, I think that's probably just like a worthwhile endeavour. It's uh, There's no real issues to getting it and it just means that we now just have the shortcut. Um, and it's you should be a little easy. careful actually running for the shortcut because in the room we just ran through there is a grafted scion. So there if is... he's at the end of the room that you are at that might present a problem, so just wait for him to walk away and then run and grab the shortcut. So now we're starting like again from the rooftops, but now it's it's not like we have to retrace all the steps that we've done. We kind of go a, a slightly different direction. So it's like for the sake of getting the shortcut for like an extra minute, I think it's probably worth it, honestly. Uh, we're not going to bother fighting these guys. Um, just for the sake of quickness, I'm just running straight back up here. So even if they notice me, it just doesn't really matter. So now yeah, instead just... of um, instead of going up that sort of ruined pillar to the Claw Talisman, we're going up and round the building in the opposite direction. Oh, and you kind of see what I mean when I do this. This is again, this is something that I had never thought to do. Like, what we're doing by walking around this building is you're getting the drop on, I think it's an exile on a banished knight. Yeah. And I've always just walked up to them and fought them. I've never thought to take this approach, but thanks to the jump button, probably the best thing they added into Elden Ring, yeah. um, you have the option to take this sort of circuitous route, get the drop on them, and you could take them out with the bow from up here. You could take just the exile out and then fight the banished knight. You know, it gives you so many options. And the main reason for this is I feel that the Banished Knights are pretty strong on their own. So, specifically fighting a Banished Knight plus something else is just enough of a pain in the ass that I think it's worthwhile um, kind of taking it on this way. Now that the Exile's done, you probably could have jumped down and just ass slammed this thing to death. Granted, you could have done that and that would probably been a lot faster. But, you can just kill it with a bow. And honestly, this is why the bow is just so fucking useful. Like, the bow is, a, like, a tool in this game. Now, you just saw there yeah. that we got the altered armor set from the Banished Knight, so that's pretty cool. And we're also yeah. going to use the bow to take care of the exiles that are down below. Um, and then that way they're not going to be... Um, they're not going to be a problem for later on. Because I don't think we rest at a grace. Um, although we, we might but we might not and if we and if you make sure you don't rest at a grace if you don't need to then when you come back up this way it means that you won't be being shot off baluster as you're doing it and that's pretty good so uh you, yeah you really don't want to be shot off those fucking things so we picked up another cookbook there useful item more shit to craft with so by coming this way you're positioning yourself above the path um, that we opened with Gostok earlier. Um, yeah. The path with all the Ballastay on it, and you can actually take out the um, the Exiles manning the Ballasters from up here, and they can't return fire at you, which means you can go through the bottom part of this area uh, with ease. There should be no difficulty. Now, this section, there's actually a Banished Knight round the corner to the right here. So pulling them one at a time means you don't have to fight two Banished Knights, because if a Banished Knight and an Exile was a near-death sentence, then uh, two Banished Knights at once at this stage in the game, yeah, it's not happening. I mean, it's nothing that Ground Slam couldn't ultimately fix, right? But do we want to take the path of full resistance? Because that isn't what this guide's about. This guide is about the path of least resistance. Because these games are actually easy. You, you guys Listen. just make it harder for yourself. Listen, right, Ground Slam is the solution to every problem, but we have to come up with something entertaining for people to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I never got the Banished Knight Helm. Go was. Very nice. So, Here's the as first you can see, Alistair that we're taking out here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this just, it just makes this whole process, like, so much easier. Um... So as you can see, it was definitely a good idea getting as many uh, of the arrows as we did. And for such a small uh, soul, uh, like rune investment, I guess, I'm so used to saying souls, but yeah, for a small rune investment, this, it just 
completely annihilates how difficult this part of the game is. But you just need to remember, don't rest at the next grace. <laughs> don't fucking do it. <laughs> Because all so this you do, you've just undone all this work, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so this is very much like the dagger situation. Do not rest at the next grace before coming up here. So this guy on the baluster that you're taking out there, there is a reasonably hidden item over by him, and that's actually the arbalest crossbow. Um, crossbows in Elden Ring, not, not super worth using. The bows actually quite versatile, come up in a lot of different situations, but the crossbows have no scaling. Um, which does mean that there's really only one worth using, and that would be the poly crossbow, but we don't get that for quite some time, so... So, I'm just, like, checking the angles to see if there's any more, like, ballista and stuff that I can actually get from up here. Um, so that's kind of why I'm sort of, like, stopping and starting a little bit. Now, nice to get some arrows... Um, as you can see, we, you might need some more arrows at this point in the game. And uh, there's a golden rune here, so that's cool or whatever. And then there's way more ballista. So this, these specific ballista that we can see just now are the ones that you get pelted off of if you come through the main gate. And it's quite hard, like surprisingly hard to dodge them. Um, normally in other Souls games, it's like sometimes you can dodge shit like this, but... It's just not worth it. Um, like, I'm assuming that you could, like, bang your head against it and, like, just run straight up to the boss or whatever. Sure, you could do that, but obviously we're trying to show you how you're supposed to do this area, so. Yeah, you saw us get hit by a, a baluster shot there. It knocked us over, and that's part of the reason why getting up here with the baluster shooting at you is such a pain in the ass. Because if one hits you and it knocks you back, you've then got to figure out the timing for the rolls on the fly, there and then, for the next volley of baluster that are going to be shot at you, so... Yeah, yeah. And the fact that they put arrows up the top there does lead me to believe that what we just did there was somewhat intended, that if you approach this from the back, they want you to be able to use a bow to take out all the guys on the balusters, which I think is quite cool. It's just good game design. Yeah, I'd love to know just, like, how intentional like our approach is to the areas like is like have we done them kind of like perfectly if you kind of get what i mean like what they were thinking people would do or what the best method to do it would be i hope so that's so it's a pleasant thought <laughs> so you can discover the grace just remember that um touching the grace isn't gonna um reset all the enemy positions god i thought i was gonna fucking rest at that grace i was gonna be like see you bastard tony but no <laughs> <We're all good. laughs> no this is another example of past tony and present tony lining up yeah <laughs> uh, not only do you get pelted off ballister but obviously a bunch of guys will end up following you as well but you know if you've done things the way we've done it and you bait the guys out because strictly speaking you don't have too many like red and blue flasks right so you do have to be like somewhat like reasonable with your usages but um sometimes you will get the odd one back passively because like some enemies just kind of drop a red flask now and then that doesn't happen in legacy dungeons but it will happen in the overworld when you clear out a group of enemies um it will give you an amount of red and blue flasks back depending on how many you've used so uh, remember to keep your guard up as well. That's going to be like a huge part of getting through this area. Um, really, I, I would say that a good offense isn't the way to go here. It's very much just slow and steady wins the race when it comes to this part. Because if you fuck up even once, you have to do all of this again. But it's perfectly reasonable to not fuck up. You just have to be slow, keep your guard up. And uh, just not get greedy. Getting greedy is, um, like, fear isn't the mind killer. Getting greedy is the mind killer in this case. <laughs> yeah. If anything, fear keeps you in check with this game, actually. <laughs> so, so I think the real problem with having to do this again is not that it's difficult, because as you've just seen, it isn't. It's that it's tedious. Yes. You know, it, this the footage you've just seen was like 30 minutes of gameplay 
And to make a point, it is all of that effort just to get the Arbalist. Yeah. <laughs> that is the whole point of this. We don't even fucking use it. And it is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so aye, that is, that's, that's that bit done. Um, so Kind of a tough enemy coming up here. Yeah, the Lion Guardians. Um, they'll tend to drop um, a smithing stone of some kind, a beast blood, and old, old fangs. fangs. Yeah. No, um, I don't think we fight that thing just yet, but we are just grabbing this grace, seeing as we're here. Now, we did also pick up a Trina's Lily. Um, it's Eventually, they become quite a good crafting item. They're one of the few crafting items that are quite relevant, so if you see any of the Trina's Lilies, pick them up. At least I think it's the Trina's Lilies, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're okay. useful for anything involving sleep, which I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of in the DLC, but I'm not going to speculate. So now we're traveling back to the round table hold, and I'm assuming that we're going to be leveling up our weapon, etc. Well, I took you for my I'm guessing we can probably get our katana up. Yeah, nice, we can. So, obviously, um, if both our katanas are going to be used in Smith and Stone 2s, what we're going to do is fully upgrade one of them until it's Smith and Stone 3, and then start working on the other one. So, one is always going to be, like, a full amount of Smith and Stones behind the other one, but that's fine. Like, it's... As long as you've got one fully upgraded weapon, you're, you're fine. Because we're getting most of our damage from the bleed anyway. Um, well, maybe not most of it, but a lot of it. Uh, now we upgraded our faith a little bit more there, and now we are going back to the Rampart Tower to do the middle section of Stormvale. And this and middle section see, has a lot of Warhawks on it, so here's another instance where the bow is going to come in super handy in Stormvale. Yes. Um, also, you can use fire pots because they are quite weak to fire, from what I remember reading. Um, These ones specifically are standing on top of explosive barrels, so if you were to hit the barrel, yeah. It just Aye. one shots the hawk. Target eliminated. This kills the hawk. <laughs> if you can actually get the the reach on it. There we go, I managed to get that one. Cool. Now again the fire arrows also work in the same way. And just like the start, they'll die in one fire arrow, which is why we said to hold on to them. Now the hawk at the end of here that would try and throw an explosive barrel at you if you try and round this corner, but we're gonna circumvent that by blowing the barrels up early and kill the hawk. Aye, fuck them. Because honestly, fighting these things, they just they fly about so much. It's like a flying black knight is what they're like. They're fucking horrible. <laughs> oh, we're coming. Up. Oh, yeah, I cannot wait to talk about this section. <laughs> well, I'll take it away then. On you go. So. <laughs> Down here, you're going to pick up a couple of items. This is, I believe, the marred wooden shield? Question mark? Batman could not have tortured that information <laughs> out of me. Um, and down at the bottom here, a piece of the floor is going to break away, and there will be a scarab immediately. So you're going to want to chase that, and it will drop the, I think, Storm Assault Ash of War. And there's one other item in this area, but the item's kind of a trap, because as you approach it, a Crucible Knight who gave us a lot of trouble in a previous part, is uh, going to come out of that gateway over there. And we have the best possible solution for fighting this thing. And that is, we don't fucking fight this thing. We <laughs> yeah. let gravity fight this thing. <laughs> so you've got to run night, Oh, sorry. This Crucible Knight does have a drop, from what I remember. But, instead of fighting it, you can just do this. I think it's Aspect of the Crucible Horns. This one drops. Uh, see ya. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> this works every time, by the way. Yep, 100% consistent. Never fight this Crucible Knight again. Fuck him. <laughs> God, I love discovering this bit of information. I was like, fuck oh, yes, that's so awesome. good. You can do this again later, or something similar to this later, um, to another Crucible Knight. I don't know if we demo demonstrate that one, but when that Crucible Knight pops up in a video, I will explain what you can do to kill it instantly. So, we're just uh, carrying on the beaten path again. Sadly, it does mean dealing with these guys yet again, but that's that's okay. 
we have uh, quite a lot of cracked pots. And again, just to reiterate, the cracked pots work like your Estus flask. If you use them to craft an item, and when you have used those items, you still have as many cracked pots. I just thought that you could only make 20 firebombs in the entire game to begin with. Uh, and that's just not that's just not the case. Yeah, you get 20 firebombs for the whole playthrough, and then you just fucked. Yeah, now, inside... Well, you, get, you get 20 firebombs per life, basically. But, uh, yeah. yeah, so... This is Sorcerer Roger, the second of the, I believe, three NPCs we're going to encounter in Stormvale. Now, he is a spell sword. He can sell you magical ashes of war, eventually. Um, you can talk to him, exhaust his dialogue options, and uh, eventually he will move to the round table hold. Now, he's quite important for a number of side quests. Um, we will address those as and when they come up, but ultimately his role in the plot is to die. Um, <laughs> and then just start rotting on the balcony in uh, Round Table Hold. That's pretty much his role. Aye, but for now, we're just going to talk to him and eventually he will show up again. So, another Exile and Banish Knight combo. So we're obviously going to do what we've done with, like, killing the Exile and then at least whittling away the Banished Knight at least somewhat. That way we can fight it one-on-one. -on -one. So now we're, like, in the inside of the middle bit of Stormvale, I guess. And um, it's just some more Exile Knights. There's also the Grafted Scion, which is the same enemy that is, like, the auto, quote-unquote, auto-death enemy of the tutorial area. And uh, you can, indeed, just pepper it with arrows and kill it this way. Um, it's At this point in the game, it's not that difficult to take care of with Ground Slam. You could just do that. But, uh, yeah, we decide to just do it the, the cool way. The cool and sexy now, way. If you do want to do it the cool way, be careful when you're jumping onto that table because it is destructible. Yeah, that's um, Just true. run over those sandbags and over this wall. Um, kill the single guy, and then I think we're heading to the roofs after this. But, uh, yeah, just be careful not to break the table as you're jumping onto it. Try and jump onto it from a decent distance away, because if you break the table, you can't do that cheese, and you'd either have to go rest at a grace or um, fight it the normal way. And why would you do that when you have so many arrows and a great tool like the longbow? Exactly. Honestly, if anybody got you, if anybody got you, the longbow got you. Only real G... Right, longbows in Elden Ring. Gotta be one of my favourite genders. Yeah. <laughs> so, Banished Knight, so we're actually, we're, we're gonna take the uh, the sneaky backstab approach, because um, these guys, I mean, these guys do hit pretty hard. Let's, let's be fair, they do. Demo in there that... Um, ground Slam's a great follow-up to a backstab, because you can hit them while they're still getting up. Yes, very much so. Now, we've got the Mimic Veil. Um, I can't even remember what that does. So, it's the equivalent of the Silver Talismans from Dark Souls 2, the White Branches in Dark Souls 3, um, Chameleon, the spell. It turns you into an object in the environment, so it's really a PvP thing. More so than anything. I have no idea if it works on, like, AI enemies. I have not got the faintest clue. I've never thought to try it. <laughs> Somebody give it a shot and tell us. Put it in the tips comment. Aye, aye. Good idea, actually. So, out that little section there, we've got another stone sword key, which is kind of the most important part from there. Um, pretty good. Uh, definitely go and pick that up, because obviously we use pretty much every stone sword key we get. And uh, here's some more commoners. Literally... I mean, they, 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 I don't even think they even tried to attack you there. It kind of almost feels bad. So there's the Highland Axe. Um, that had a, that has the effect of buffing your roar abilities? Question mark? Yes, exactly right. Um, and it does stack with the raw medallion that we got in part two. Um, so if you wanted to get the absolute most out of your raw Ashes of War, you could... Uh, oh, actually, I'll interrupt myself there. The Crimson Hood will appear there after you complete Rodrika's quest. Now, if you were doing Rodrika's quest the normal way, what you would pick up in that location is called the Chrysalid's Memento. Uh, you would take that to her, and then she would reward you with the Golden Seed. You could come back and get the Crimson Hood then. But, because we went to Leornia straight away, 
and rest that grace. Uh, I think that's an important part of that. It just automatically, not auto-completes your quest, but like shifts it forward an amount. Now, in this area, we picked up the Misery Cord. Um, that's a cool dagger that we also just use as another bidoof to put uh, weapon arts on. And we also got the Iron Wet Blade, which allows us to do what? Uh, heavy infusion, uh, sharp infusion, and quality infusion, I believe, for your weapons. So it changes the way that scaling works on the weapons. So as you level up strength or dexterity, if you change the scaling to, say, heavy, it improves the strength scaling of the weapon, meaning that per point you invest in strength, you get more damage out of your weapon than you otherwise would. Now, here's a question. Does the Roar Medallion increase the strength of stuff like Boggart's Roar, which gives you a an attack boost so does it increase the attack boost from that kind of roar yes so if you use braggot's roar um and you have the highland axe in your offhand or even if you have braggot's roar on the highland axe and you also have um the raw medallion equipped the buff does stack with itself and what it will do in that instance is it will boost the strength of the charged attacks of the weapon after using the raw rash cool <laughs> Yeah. So we're getting the Godskin prayer book, which again, um, to reiterate, make sure you give that prayer book to the giant turtle man that we will be uh, encountering later on. Do not give that to any of the other NPCs. You can, and it doesn't technically matter, but it just means you can give all the prayer books and stuff like that to one guy rather than multiple guys. So it's just a, a bit easier. And it's also a guy you can warp straight directly to. And we also got a seal, uh, so like a casting tool for incantations. Speaking of that, if you um, started as a um, prophet, so you started with some basic incantations and the finger seal, or even as the confessor, um, the Godslayer uh, seal will consistently out-damage that at the same upgrade level per point in faith than... Well, the Godslayer seal will be stronger than the Finger Slayer seal, so once you get that, it's basically a direct upgrade. So you may as well switch to it at that point. So now we are. I mean, there's a lot of exiles here, so you, you can't. I mean, they, you, they do die pretty quickly to our builds, don't get us wrong, but obviously, like, just be careful. You need to work your way through all of them in order to get all the items. None of the items are fucking worth it, but <laughs> you still need to do it. Um, thankfully these guys with the guns are looking away from you but again if you were to come from the main gate and you come up here you have this many guns pointing at you it's basically auto death right so that's why we just go through this area the, the quote unquote like correct way or the long way or whatever you want to call it it seems intended they did give you the arrows <laughs> yeah <laughs> the yeah, path we've that... taken seems to be the sensible one um so I do like the kind of, like, you can you can go the incredibly punishing hard way if you really want to. I do like that they give you that option. But, um, yeah. Now I mean, for speedrunning, it is actually faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm sure, I'm sure. pretty much run straight up the dangerous path all the way to the area boss. Now we've got the pike Within there. minutes. Yeah, the, the pike, fantastic yeah. weapon. It's the longest regular spear in the game. So there's two spear classes, spears and great spears. The pike is the longest normal spear in the game, which makes it really annoying if you go into playthrough 2 and you're power stancing them in PvP. If you do that, I hate you. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, most of the items are just like small runes and like consumable stuff. Uh, but there is the wooden great shield that we just picked up there. Um... And now there's a couple more bits in this. There's a doorway. So you can see it there. There's a painting that we need to get. And also there's a dog and an omen enemy. Now this is, I think, the first time we encounter an omen enemy in the game. And they can drop the omen cleaver or the warped axe. So the one that they are wielding. So I'm, I think that's the omen cleaver that they'll have currently. Yeah, correct. Um, the omen cleaver... Much like the Dismounter is a um, curved greatsword that you can swap the Ash of War on. Um, it is the strength curved greatsword to the Dismounter's dexterity curved greatsword. So not a bad weapon. Big uh, big damage, big reach. Generally pretty good if you get one to drop. Try it out, see what you think. 
If you don't like it, switch back to the katana with ground slam on it, because why wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's us picked up that painting there. Now, the Omen enemies are actually a great example of just how good ground slam is. Because it pancakes them, and they're not they're big and they're aggressive and they have quite a lot of health, but do you know what they aren't doing if they're pancaked on the ground? What are they not doing? They're not attacking you. No, they ain't. So it's just odd how ground slam actually becomes almost a defensive and offensive move. The utility of it's astounding. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just so, so good. So here's another grace here, thank God. Um, you could, in theory, if you wanted to, just run straight through here and grab the grace. You will have to dodge quite a lot of things, but um, it just means that you then don't have to come all the way through this area um, if you died to all the exiles and stuff like that. So you could just make a, a straight line straight to the grace. Um, and if you're maybe struggling a little bit more than how we are in this guide, it might be worthwhile doing so. And then you can just take care of everything from the back way rather than the front way. And we're just again showing the utility of the bow to take care of these fucking warhawks. Like, if you don't believe me, just try and fight one of them without the bow. Uh, or like fight even, try to fight two of them with, with like, you know, at the same time without the bow. Uh, it's just a, it's a nightmare, it's horrible. I think it's worth noting that there are actually um, two or three different variants of the Warhawks. So there's um, unadorned ones that are just a big bird. There's adorned ones that are wearing um, two Warhawks talons on their legs. Um, they will drop the weapon when killed, or can drop the weapon when killed. And then there's the ones that we were just taking out with the bow there. And they can breathe fire at you, so try and avoid that. Now, this is Nefeli Lu. She's a pretty important NPC who can be of assistance to you throughout the whole game. She has a very extensive quest, um, and you get some exceptionally good rewards from it, like two Ancient Dragon Smithing Stones, I think you can get from her quest. Yeah. yeah. So it's well worth doing. Um, we will mention her as and when she comes up, but talking to her now makes her available as a summon for uh, Godric the Grafted, the major area boss for Stormvale Castle. So, yeah, for now, just uh, exhaust the dialogue. And, and that goes for every NPC. Make sure you talk to every NPC until they start repeating themselves. Um, don't just, you know, go through one line of dialogue and then that's it. You need to go through all of it. So, again, using the bow to bait this troll guy. And uh, we need to bait this guy all the way back because there's a destructible statue, like in part one or two, in Limgrave. This guy can... Um, split open a stone for us but you need to bait him and it takes it's just, just a right pain in the ass because he doesn't seem particularly committed to killing you you know he's like kind of like you know one foot in one foot out like yeah i mean he's all the way over there uh... quite literally like you can see him literally <laughs> say that he's like ah oh, fuck it like, <laughs> My job's done. My job was to defend the staircase I was stood on. <laughs> You're not on the staircase. I've done my job. It's more than my job's worth, mate. You're going to pay me more? I'm not defending two staircases. That's two days' pay. <laughs> but there, we've got five Smith and Stone 1s and a Smith and Stone 2, so probably, probably worthwhile doing that. So now we're just running back up to the stairs. And... I was going to say just avoid those guys, but apparently it's significantly harder then it's easier said than done, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, here we are at the grace just before the boss, but there is still an amount of other bit of Stormvale to do, if you can believe. I think the first thing we'll be doing on that path will be... Yeah, we'll be grabbing this scarab here. Uh, I think this one drops Stormcaller. My sweet baby angel Stormcaller. Um, exceptionally good if the weapon is big and can inflict bleed because it hits so many times. Um, I think, that I think you we end up using Stormcaller uh, a few times through the guide, actually. Yeah, so I, you have a treat in store for you if you keep watching the guide, which you should. Please keep watching the guide. Um, you have a treat in store for you in a later part where we use that to beat a pretty difficult boss, actually. Yeah, yeah. So just take care of these little jar guys, and I'm pretty sure there's another cracked pot or a ritual pot here. Two cracked pots. 
two crackpots. Cool, cool. So that gives you access to two more throwable items per stack of throwable items, I guess. Now, that item that was just floating there was the drop from the larger warrior jar, and they will drop warrior jar shards when killed. Um, those are used in crafting recipes. They're not super important, but there is they come up, uh, come up for that is well worth uh, crafting, and that would be the iron jar aromatic, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. So we're not going to fight those enemies because there's literally no reason to. And yeah, the iron jar aromatics are very, very good. So uh, picking up whatever you can from those big pots are, is definitely worthwhile because it does come up um, in a very significant way. So uh, grabbing some uh, some runes and a smith and stone. By this point, I mean, you've got smith and stone ones coming out of fucking arse, so it like, literally doesn't really matter, but... Um, Night, you know, it's better to have it and not need it, right? Um, so there's a bunch oh, of yeah, commoners so... in there. For the, for the sake of speed, we're just, like, not even fighting them. Um, we're just kind of blasting through this bit. And there's also... This item... That you <laughs> the... have to... <sighs> <laughs> it's like a pixel too high off the floor. You've got to jump on the wall to pick it up. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, so... God. There's still another bit to do on, like, even further down, but uh, we are now gonna just get this shortcut here um, before we continue on. Now, you might have. Oh, actually, apparently, we're going back to the round table hold before we do anything. So, yeah, sorry for that weird cut, um, but it is what it is. So, I mean, I think... we're probably using a few of those smithing stones that we, we just obtained to upgrade the weapons even further. Yes, almost certainly. Um, and then we also have a few runes as well. Um, I think because the next part we're going to do involves a boss in the bottom part of Stormvale, so we're just going to try and use up as many of the souls that we have um, and as much like resources. Um, and at, at this point, we can also start upgrading the uh, the bow because none of our main weapons are using Smith and Stone ones, so we might as well get a little bit extra damage out of the bow if we can. And uh, we might get one or two levels uh, this many souls. Uh, probably at this point, yeah. Cool, so that's uh, 15 faith. So that's us done leveling up faith. And the next point will be to get to 12 arcane. Um, and just the, the amount of utility just having 15 faith and 12 arcane gives you is just crazy. So we highly, highly recommend that you get those stats because the spells that you can use are very, very, very worth it. Um, so now we're just, you know, dropping down onto these kind of like ruined roofs and there's some bats in this area. Um, I fucking hate the bats, so we're just going to use the boat to take care of them. Uh, thankfully, they're actually a little bit weaker. Uh -huh. Another artillery leaf. Right, so they're a little yes. bit weaker. Uh, weaker than the Warhawk, so you don't need to use the fire arrows to take care of these guys. Just one normal arrow in the mighty shot. Uh, probably also from leveling up the bow, that helped as well. Uh, it's possible you don't even need the fire arrows now I think about it. Maybe if you just leveled the bow up before coming to Stormvale, a normal arrow would take care of the Warhawks, so just bear that in mind. You know, given how much we used the bow throughout Stormvale, it may have been worth spending the Smithing Stones on that instead of the second katana this early on. Maybe. Um, I think it's kind of maybe 6 of 1 overall, because it's not like we've had any issues, realistically speaking. But, uh, I mean, it depends how much you want to use the bow, I guess. So, heading down um, those, like, kind of wooden platforms down at the bottom here. This is, like, the very bottom of Stormvale. And it's uh, kind of cool. Uh, there's a bunch of items down here. And then there's also, uh, I mean, it's, it is a boss, but it doesn't have a boss health bar, I don't think. No, it's just a mini boss. Um, but it's exactly the same as the thing we fought in Fringe Folk. It's another ulcerated tree spirit. Yeah, so before most bosses, we're going to just uh, remember to take our physic flask. We've got the bubble shield and the health regen. Remember to make sure we've got um, our uh, golden vow dagger on. And also, because it's an ulcerated tree spirit, it is also weak to fire. So we're going to 
pre-buff our weapon with some fire grease to just get that little bit extra damage. And uh, otherwise, it's just the same as any other ulcerated tree spirit, and by the end of the game, you will be uh, fairly adept at fighting them. Now, as we stated the first time, really, uh, there's no big problem with these guys other than the grab attack and their uh, charged explosion attack. Uh, most of their attacks will miss you, or you can like block it pretty easily. They're quite well. Um, they're quite well telegraphed. Other than the uh, the grab attack, and that is that's telegraphed by him doing like a roar beforehand. So you're just mostly watching out for the roar, and uh, we'll point it out when it happens. Um, but right now he's just doing some swipes, and that's fair enough. Switch to the dual katanas there because you're getting additional bleed build up. Um, I'm honestly not even sure if these things can bleed. But you're getting can, additional yeah. DPS. Um, well, that's even better than. But you're getting additional DPS. You're getting additional bleed build up. You've got fire damage on one katana, bleed build up on the other. You've got access to ground slam. Um, and you largely don't block this boss's attacks. You mostly roll them. So, for whatever early... reason, this thing hasn't done the roar grab attack. So I can't really point it out. It did do a roar and then use the explosion. Um, but it did not do the grab attack. Uh, with this boss, again, I find it, I personally find it very hard to avoid the explosion attack. So the solution to that is just always be at full health whenever you can be. That way, if you get hit with it, it's fine. You also get a golden seed for doing that, so it's definitely worthwhile coming down here. And there's a stone sword key down here, uh, so that's also good. But, um, yeah, now... Check this big freaky face. And there's yeah, also the this... Prince of Death's Pustule, which is a talisman that um, boosts your death resistance. Speaking of Prince of Death, that's exactly what we were just looking at there. That's the face of Godwin the Golden. Um, really interesting lore, if you wanted to actually look into it. Yeah, it's very, very cool. Um, but the Prince of Death's Pustule, as you said, boosts your resistance to death blight, which is this game's equivalent of, I guess... Curse, Frenzy, uh, Terror. It's the, you know, the instant fuck you thing that the boss, that the enemy can do to you. Just instantly kills you. So now we're moving on to uh, Godric, the grafted boss, which is the first uh, shard bearer boss that we're going to be doing. Uh, now, it just turns out that our setup is fairly decent at taking care of him. We've got, we're going to summon the imps, we're going to hit Golden Vow, which is going to buff us and the imps. And then we're just going to fucking go to town on them. Um, we are exactly the right level we should be. We've done pretty much everything in the game you're meant to do up until this point. Um, but I'm assuming you'll have a lot more to say about it than I do, so on you go. Yeah, so Godric has a, a number of attacks, some of which are quite tricky to dodge, because given the amount of limbs, he doesn't telegraph most of his moves super well. Um... The AoE he telegraphs by cackling, so you'll hear him laugh, he'll put the axe in the air, and the best way to avoid that would be to jump twice in his first phase. In his second phase, if he goes for that move, he'll raise the axe in the air with a single hand. Here's his second phase transition now. Um, speaking of which, when he goes to phase transition, do exactly as we're doing here, run straight towards him, and the dragon's fire breath will just miss you, giving you a huge window of opportunity to build a bleed on him. Um... Imp's doing work as well. Uh, but yeah, when he goes to do the ground slam, you jump to avoid the AoEs. Um, and if you're standing at a distance from him, he will create that little cyclone that you saw there. Um, if you're up close, he will dive after it. If you're far away, he'll shoot two projectiles at you. They're kind of a pain in the ass to dodge because they move really strangely. Um, but all in all, Godric, as you can see, not too difficult, as long as you've got good bleed build-up, you've got the support from your imps. Takes forever to die. Um, we also but... have a second footage as well, to show as well. Um, because in that particular um, clip, the imps put in so much work. I think they bled it three times, um, which is pretty crazy. So you can also summon Nefeli for him. Um, in this playthrough, we don't use any of the summons aside from one. Um, just to show you. Uh, 
So you can summon Nefeli. Nefeli is okay. But again, um, if you do summon Nefeli before the boss, it will boost the boss's HP. Um, and we don't want that. So the, if you summon the imps, you don't get that HP boost from having a summon via a sign in the boss. So as you can see, the, fuck it, the imps just putting in the work getting bleed damage. Um, and when he sticks his axe in the ground, that is when you need to start jumping to avoid that. Imp's doing such yeah. a great job at taking um, taking aggro off him. And Aslam also does... That. Yeah, and Aslam does a great job at staggering him. Um, so yeah, you know, our setup just comes at bosses from like a bunch of different ways. And it's fairly simple as well. It's nothing particularly complicated. Again, it's nothing another you, bleed proc. You couldn't have within 20 minutes of starting Lingrave. Like, you could yeah, just run, yeah. you could pick up the Katani, you could pick up Ground Slam. Um, everything except the Imps, you would have to go quite a bit out of your way to get them, but if you pick them as a starting gift, there they are. That's just three sources of bleed instead of just you. So, I am personally quite bad at dodging his attacks. Um, it's... Um, the boss strategies tend to be more about, like, here is a setup that will get you through this, um, I will admit. But, yeah, the are just doing so good. Yeah, again, I think they, like, they take care of them. Uh, th that sort of flamethrower attack is pretty easy to dodge, but otherwise, that's Godric the Grafted. Um, if you come here underprepared, it can be quite challenging. But if you have exactly what we have, even if you have less HP, etc., you're actually just going to be fine. So we've got it taken care of. He's dropped his Remembrance, which is like a boss soul, and his Great Rune, but we'll talk about that when it comes relevant. And here's Gostok, who's now appeared in the boss room, as we mentioned earlier, and after you exhaust his dialogue, Gostok will become a merchant. He sells the Bandit class's starting gear, as well as some pickled foul feet for farming items, um, and the Cestus weapon. It's not bad, but there is a better version of it. This path we're on now takes us out into Leonia, but on the bottom floor of this area, so we're going to drop off a little ledge here, and then double back, and um, we're going to pick up an item called a Shabriri Grape. Now that's a pretty important quest item for an NPC who we're going to meet in just a second, and she might look a little bit familiar. We, uh, we saw her dead earlier in the game, but before we talk to her, um, another familiar face will appear at this grace. We picked this up when we were skipping Roderica's quest. Here's Bok, and he's finally going to be able to do his job and alter our armor for us. So we do that. We put the cape on. We get some extra defenses, and then straight away. No, specifically, this is the grace we came to when we first came to Lyonia. But here we are. Yeah. It is Hieta, not Irina. It is Hieta. But she wants and a Shabriri grape, and it just so happens we have one. Funny that. Yeah. <laughs> Giving her the grape, you get the, um, I think the proper bow gesture is what we just got. I think and so. after you do this, you sit at the grace, and she will have moved. We didn't actually look at where she was stood, but she will now have moved to somewhere in Leonia. And from there, we're heading to this grace we picked up earlier, just past the Lion Guardian that we're going to go take care of now. Yeah, so maybe now would be a good time to explain the uh, the great runes. Because all we're doing is fighting this lion. They're a pain in the arse. They move about a lot. It's like fighting a lion version of the Black Knights. Um, so just, you it's know, like fighting get... a lion in real life. It's a pain I, in the arse. I actually genuinely think fighting a lion in real life would be a lot easier than one of these. <laughs> but yeah, just whap out your ass lambs, or if you're late later in the game, your lion's claws. Lion's Claw is actually uh, it's quite good at fighting these things. Funnily enough, you get Lion's Claw from one of these things. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, so yeah, do you want to explain a little bit about what Great Runes are? So the Great Runes are... Is it, so you have... You equip a Great Rune at the at a Grace, but you have to activate them first at these Divine Towers. Once they're active, you can equip them. And to act, once they're equipped, you then need to activate them whilst they're equipped and you do that by taking a rune arc so once you take the rune arc you will get the effect that the great rune bestows upon you and uh, for godrics it's actually it's like the most like generalized base one and it just gives you five in every stat so it gives you extra endurance and carry weight and fp and just gives you extra everything 
um, by a little bit. So that's pretty powerful. However, we go through the entire game without actually activating it um, because you might not have a rune arc and we don't want to use a strategy that specifically involves a limited amount of consumable items. So you could actually end up having a much easier time um, just going through the game using the strategies that we were using because at no point do we ever activate our rune arcs or rather activate our great rune using a rune arc. Um, but yeah, more on that when it becomes a little bit more relevant. For now, we are fighting some golems. Um, and this is, we've fought, fought these before, and uh, just before Morn's castle. Castle Morn, rather, and um, there's one as a boss in a cave in Limgrave. I rode cave in Limgrave. I don't know how you remember that. But anyway, uh, so these golems can drop the golem halberd, the golem great bow. Obviously, the ones that have the halberd ain't dropping the bow and vice versa. They can also drop an amount of smith and stones and uh, the golem's great arrows. And there is one golem in Caelid that we're never going to ever be relevant, but that can drop golem's magic arrows. But just completely get ever using them out of your mind. Now, these things have glass ankles, as we've seen, so uh, Crown Slam is going to take good care of them. But so actually, uh, there we used a we used a little trick, something you can do here. So there's one shooting you from the distance. If you line yourself up and hold up your guard, the arrows shot from this one in the distance can actually knock the two over that approach you with the halberds. So if you're uh, timing it right, you can keep them sort of permanently on the ground, taking advantage of the huge crit damage that you get on these things by hitting them in the chest. Um, just hovering in midair there because ground slam yeah. was acting weird uh, <laughs> but yeah you can use this guy in the distance to help you fight the two who approach you which is kind of cool now we just passed a little warp gate there this actually just takes you to the other part of the like the unbroken side of the bridge um well i get i guess the other side of the broken bridge because yeah, yeah that's right <laughs> So we picked up uh, another scarab head there. Um, I can't remember what that one's for, but um, can you remember it's what that's The of War scarab. Right. Okay. So um, that gives you. Uh, I think it makes your ashes of war use less FP. Yeah, it makes them cheaper, but you take more damage while it's equipped. Uh, so it's like theoretically all right particularly if you're doing like a, a lot of ranged stuff and you're not getting hit a lot something like that could actually get you a lot more mileage out your ashes of war whatever strategy it is that you're using so quite cool yeah not bad at all we're just sort so of I... doubling back on this bridge here clearing out some of these storm hawks or war hawks just to uh pick up the one or two items that are laying about and then it'll be up the tower yeah the, the items on this bridge are actually like uh kind of doesn't really matter um, was a pickled foot um, I think there might be like a golden rune I think this is a golden rune yeah golden rune 2 oh, let's the... fucking go nice <laughs> so now just speeding this bit back up to the door honestly eventually um, I just end up speeding the entire well actually I don't speed the entire process up just now as well just go I mean go through the door up the lift um, I'm, I'm sure you can follow what we're doing Please ignore the Steam notification. And, um, yeah, we're just, like... I, I don't even really know... Sometimes there's, like, two graces on these things for some reason. But now, if you touch this... You get uh, Godric's Great, Great Rune. So now, if you go back to a grace... You can then equip it... And activate it with a rune arc. Now, we're heading back to this merchant here. And for the life of me, I cannot fucking remember why. I think it's because he sells a Smith and Stone too. I think. Yeah, and I think it let us continue the upgrade path for the second katana. I think so, yeah. He also has a crack pot, which we're going to get now. Um, cause, I think he had know. some stone sword keys for sale there as well, so if you are ever running short, there's another... Ah, speaking of stone sword keys from a merchant. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to get it from this guy, because they're only 2,000, and this is the cheapest stone sword keys you can buy anywhere. Um, and he also has... Uh, some smith and stones if you need them Have a safe journey. but yeah so um those are the only stone sword keys we ever need to buy 
Uh, we will always have enough on us at any given point from this point onwards. And now that we have defeated Godric, this opens. All right, we're recording. And Am I three. going first or are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you go first. Okay. So three, two, one. Indeed it does. So when you come in here, you'll interact with the two fingers, get the rapture gesture, and you can come over here and talk to Fingerita Enya, and she is where you can spend the boss remembrances, like the boss souls from the Dark Souls series. You can trade them in and get, in this instance, one of two rewards. So hi there, it's Edit and Tony, again. So when it comes to duplicating your remembrances, there's actually like a few things that really need to be said, and I guess there just wasn't enough space. So there's 15 different remembrances in the game, you take them to the wandering mausoleums, which is these things that you can see the now, and you use the altar in them to get a duplicate of a remembrance that you've already gotten. Now you don't need to have the remembrance in your inventory to get a duplicate of it, just as long as you've had it at some point, you can get another one here. And for a totally unnecessary game mechanic they put in this fucking game, you can only duplicate shard bearer remembrances at mausoleums that have bells and there's five of them and two without the bells and in the ones without the bells you can only duplicate non shard bearer remembrances but this just means that you need to take something into account if you duplicate a non shard bearer remembrance in a mausoleum with a bell thus the ones that can duplicate shard bearer remembrances because there's only five of them that means that if you duplicate a non-shard bearer one, then you only have four mausoleums that can duplicate shard bearer remembrances. So another thing to bear in mind is that there is only seven wander mausoleums overall, which means that you cannot get all the boss items in one playthrough. At most, you can get just under half of them. So in addition to trading boss souls for like weapons and casting tools and stuff, Enya also sells boss armor. That list of bosses being Radan, Renala, Melania, Godfrey, Elmer of the Briar, Loretta, Malaketh, Niall, Morgoth, and Moog. So once you've defeated any of those bosses, you can come back to Enya and she'll sell their armor. So I know that was a huge mouthful, but I think a lot of this just had to be said and there's no elegant way of saying it. So for the Remembrance of the Grafted from Godric, you can either get his axe or a fist weapon. That's the axe of Godric and the Grafted Dragon. The axe of Godric has the sort of fracturing ground stab that he used during the fight, and the grafted dragon has the big flame spray. Uh, neither one's particularly great, but Gideon's room is also open. Uh, you can come in here, you can interact with him, and uh, get some information about the upcoming shard bearers, and then just outside, we will be going to talk to Nefeli. Yeah, um, so exhaust Nefeli's dialogue, and she'll give you the arsenal charm. So that's... Um, it just gives you more equip weight, which is okay, I suppose. Um, it's not as good as it would be in like Dark Souls 1 or 2, I guess, but whatever. Now this is Roger, who's feeling a bit under the weather, um, and he'll give you his uh, rapier, which is plus 8, um, which kind of has a few implications for if you go online, it means people that have a plus 8 weapon can invade you. So kind of just bear that in mind if you take that off him. Uh, it means that people slightly higher level than you can invade you. Alright, Ed and Tony back again. So just to mention that Roger's rapier that he gives you has an Ash of War attached to it. That's Glintstone Phalanx. Now, this Ash of War is actually pretty good. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but it does do a lot of poise damage. So you can actually stagger enemies super easily with it. So if that's just something you're inclined to try out, it's pretty good. But you have to take it off the weapon in order to get it in your inventory. So just need to mention that. But otherwise, um, he'll sell you some um, spell-related skills, but just exhaust his dialogue and then come and talk to D about Roger, and then exhaust his dialogue. Sort of a common theme with the NPCs is you want to exhaust all the dialogue options you have available to them. Um, yeah. That trend continues throughout the whole game. Uh, now we're going to come over to Hugh, upgrade our katana. Yes, we actually, we do get to, yeah, nice. Yeah, nice. Um, and then from here, we'll be heading downstairs to a part of Round Table that we've not seen before. Um, down here, there's a couple of these Imp Seal statues where you can spend the Stone Sword Keys that we just bought. So it's one to get through the first door, and then there's another one through here that costs two. So all of that for 6,000 runes from that one merchant, so go us. 
Aye, and then you get the, uh, what's that, the, some bolts and the black bow. Um, specifically black key those... crossbow, specifically. Yeah, um, and those bolts cause scarlet rot. And in here, you've got the Assassin's Prayer Book. Um, once again, you can give that to the NPC we were talking about, the Turtle Pope, Muriel. Um, yeah. Just convenient to keep all of your spell merchant items in the same place, because then you can just go back to him. He never moves. You can get them all in the one spot. Now, the Black Key Bolts, you said, do inflict Scarlet Rot, but it's just not worth it, because we have a much better way of delivering Scarlet Rot a bit later in the game. So, uh, yes. Just, just ignore that for now because our method is significantly better. Now, jumping down here, you'll then be invaded by Mad Tongue Albrecht. And uh, he's actually kind of hard uh, for an NPC invader. So we're just going to just immediately just scumbag him. And as he's bowing, we're just going to ground slam him. But as you approach him, he will give you the... Uh, I can't remember what the gesture was. Um, it's like the, the dueling bow. I'm not sure exactly of its name. But you'll see it pop up in the video. So that gesture. Uh, yeah, he can inflict both Frostbite and Bleed on you. He has spells that can do both. His weapon does both. Um, they both do big chunks of damage, so um, try and stay out of his range, but fighting NPCs as a caster or with a bow is kind of a pain in the ass. so like with most things in the early game, it's just get close to it, press L2, ground slam it until it's dead. Yeah, um, if you were using like a big heavy weapon, like a hammer, uh, wild Strikes will make light work of them, or at least it should do. There's some NPCs where it's marginally less effective, but for the most part, 99% of the time, Wild Strikes is just going to one or two combo pretty much every NPC in the game because they can't get out of it. And now, running through here, we get the Cypher Pater. Like a Pater, yeah. It's um, a pure holy damage weapon. Does no physical damage at all, so it's great versus the undead, like death birds, skeletons, things like that, even tibia mariners. It's good for all of those things. Popping back to Limgrave and interacting with a message left for us by Vare, who we met in the very first episode. He will have now moved to Leonia, and you get the bravo gesture from interacting with that message. Uh, now yeah. we'll be coming here, just doing a bit of leveling up, spending the last of our runes. Another interesting thing about the Cypher Pater as well is um, because it does pure holy damage, it means it actually does quite a lot of damage through blocking shields in terms of PvP or whatever. So you can't really block its damage, which is interesting. Um, or not fully anyway. But uh, yeah, so then we're just leveling our arcane up to 11. One more, and that is us at 12, which is our um, goal amount of arcane. And uh, with that, that is Stormvale. And okay, there we go, that's Stormvale Castle. Done. Join us in part 6, where we're going to be doing Lyurnia. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.